In this tutorial you will learn about light transmission and diffusion. LEDs are light sources with an output from a relatively small area, which leads to various issues you have to deal with when you're designing luminaires. So let's have a look at a bit of theory and then some diffuser tests. The first issue is glaringly obvious. If you ever look straight into a light source, you feel irritated, maybe even blinded, with an after image left on your retina. This effect is called glare and it ranges from being only discomforting to being harmful. The second issue is also straightforward. If you have an LED strip or matrix with a fairly wide spacing, objects in the light's path can create unpleasant and distracting shadows on illuminated surfaces. The third issue is probably not so obvious. Luminaires often look bright, tricking you into thinking they provide good illumination. But it is only the luminaire's body that looks bright, while little light is actually emitted through into the room. When light interacts with a material that has some level of transparency, you should be aware of four factors. Reflection, or how much of the incident light bounces back from the material's surface. Transmission, or how much of the incident light is passing through the material. Scattering, or how much of the incident light is bounced off the particles or molecules the material is made of. Absorption, or how much of the incident light never exits the material and is converted into heat instead. So, because you want to diffuse, the material should be optimized for maximum transmission and maximum scattering. Since one cannot maximize both together, there will always be a trade-off. When light is entering and exiting a transparent material, it is refracted twice. If it is scattered along the way, some of the light could pass right through. It could also exit the material in the wrong direction or it could be subjected to total internal reflection, which increases the chance of being scattered again. There are four ways light can be scattered, depending on the light's wavelengths and the material's particle size. An ideal diffuser should optimize for the first type of knee scattering, so that most, but not all, light is scattered forward, and also for geometric scattering to introduce as many random refractions as possible. When you want to diffuse light emitted by one or more LEDs, you need to consider the beam angle. An LED which emits its total lumen output across a narrow beam angle is much harder to diffuse over short distances. You cannot increase the distance between LED and diffuser arbitrarily, because light diminishes from its source inversely proportional to the square of the distance. In other words, doubling the distance between light source and illuminated target attenuates the illumination to only a quarter of the original value. With LED strips and matrices, the tighter the spacing, the lesser the contrast between lit and unlit areas, the easier it is to achieve homogeneous diffusion. Also, the LED's distribution angle and distance to the diffuser play a major role, particularly with cob LEDs. In a nutshell, when designing a luminaire, you need to take into account the LED's light distribution, possibly the LED pitch, the distance between LED and diffuser, and the diffusing material's properties and thickness. Now that we've looked at a bit of theory, let's see some diffuser material tests. So, we have eight material samples cut to the same dimensions, with different thicknesses, surface treatments, and transmission values. For a reliable comparison, we took photos under the exact same condition at three different distances from an LED strip matrix. At a distance of only 10 mm, you see bright hotspots right away. Only material 1 achieves some diffusion at such a close distance. But with only 47% transmission, the inefficiency is nearly as bad as with milk or opalescent glass. At a distance of 20 mm, which is still very close, you notice that material 3 and 6 are quite okay. And 72% transmission is very good when you consider that modern argon gas filled double glazed windows transmit just over 80% of visible light. At a distance of 40 mm, materials 3 and 6 perform very well, and some of the others aren't far behind. Depending on the factors shown in the conclusion, considering the mechanical stability you require, 
and the surface treatment you desire, you can assume that from around 40mm upwards, all materials except number 1 and 4 are useful diffusers with rather high visible light transmission. The last 8 screens show each diffuser at all 3 distances at once, so you can pause the video to look at each in more detail. And now it is your turn. Thank you for watching and listening.